This is a very important video where I'm going to show you how advanced players think during the games versus how beginners and intermediate level players think during their games. So it's one video that you wouldn't want to skip. So keep watching up to the end and remember to subscribe and hit the like button. Let's go. Right. So let's see where my opponent probably went wrong. I guess you're going to learn something new as well. So my opponent started with e4 and then I played pawn to g6. The move I was expecting here was pawn to d4, obviously. Why? Because against passive opening responses like the modern defense, the Pierce defense, the King's Indian defense, or even the Queen's Indian defense, what you want to do is to get the whole center. Is to play normal chess, in other words, and stick to all the opening principles. For example, d4 was going to make a lot of sense here gaining more central space and after bishop g7 knight c3 was going to make a lot of sense because what you do in the opening stage is just developing your minor pieces on their potential squares or on the most active squares like this and then you secure your king no need to complicate stuff if you don't know much theory and then say after pawn to d6 white should have played something like knight to f3 developing your knights first it's more advisable in chess because your knights control a lot of squares on the board, as you can see. And so what that does is limiting your opponent's movements. For example, here I can't even put a bigger piece on d5 because the queen's knight is already controlling that square. And in other variations, I can't put my queen on a4 because the queen's knight is also controlling that square. So it's not just about the direct moves that you're seeing on the board. It's also about your coverage, the squares that your pieces are controlling. That's why we develop knights first before developing bishops. Simple chess. So after knight to f6, e.g. white should have played something like bishop e3 and then say castle short. And this is where you have an option to either castle long or simply develop your light squared bishop either on c4 or on d3 in this case. It doesn't even matter by the way. And after something like knight c6, this is when you castle short if you want and continue playing normal chess your pieces are already out and the only piece that is remaining to develop is your queen and then you connect your rooks like this bring them on the center and start playing chess so this is the simplest way of playing the game of chess ladies and gentlemen and i'm not saying if you play like this you will always be winning but what i'm saying is at least you are going to lose with dignity if you don't play well in the end game or at least you are going to learn how to coordinate your pieces very well in the game my opponent played this weird move bishop c4 which i never expected to see i'm sure my opponent expected me to play e5 on the first move so that they can play the bishop's opening and maybe transpose this into some kind of the vienna and this is what happens if all you know is the bishop's opening against e5 so you need to learn a lot of openings if you need be just for the sake of knowing so i played pawn to g6 on the first move and then my opponent played bishop c4 which is a very rare move it wasn't even doing anything here i could have played pawn to e6 to shut that down if i wanted but i played c6 with the idea of going pawn to d5 just simple stuff at least my move had a reasonable plan behind it that's why i did not develop a minor piece and so my opponent played knight to f3, knight c3 would have made sense because this allowed me to go pawn to d5 just like I mentioned in the game and after ed I simply took back and now this turned into some kind of a queen's pawn game but anyways bishop b3 was played then I played bishop g7 continuing with my initial idea what you want to do in chess at best is to have two pawns on the center like this that's what i wanted to do by the way i wanted to play pawn to e5 next supported by my bishop and then later on develop my knight on e7 and whatever so the move i was expecting to see was pawn to d4 obviously because that's how you stop these kinds of ideas you stop your opponent's pawns with your pawns not your pieces like what my opponent did here because that gave me time to develop my queen's knight with tempo now planning to go pawn to e5. Again, I was expecting to see pawn to d4 to stop my e5 idea, but my opponent played queen b5. This was unnecessary, guys, even though it wasn't a blunder or a mistake. This was 
an inaccuracy in that White was attacking nothing here. I could have easily defended that pawn if I wanted to, but I chose to defend with the knight, also developing my minor piece with tempo by defending, right? So I played knight to f6, and then there's a rule that says don't move the same piece twice in the opening stage. Of course, that may come with an exception if you are an advanced player. But in this case, the reason why it is advisable not to move the same piece twice in the opening stage is to avoid being behind in development. I mean, piece development and just to avoid running into some crazy tactics unless the opening theory requires you to do that. But in this case, queen b5 is like a one nothing move it gives me more time to play chess to play what i want again here i was expecting to see pawn to d4 but my opponent played d3 i mean just play attacking chess if you have to there's nothing wrong with d4 supported by your king's knight i find d3 to be a little bit passive and it kind of blocks the way for this queen right the queen can't go back anyway so i cast it short by the way, I could have played a6 right here if I wanted because the worst thing you want to entertain is your enemy's pieces in your territory just like I mentioned in the video. See, this here is my territory and this half of the board going upwards like this. Oops, this is my opponent's territory. So I shouldn't entertain my enemy's pieces that are in my territory. So I should have played a6 if I wanted chasing that queen away. But I just decided to put my king to safety first. And after my opponent did the same, this is when I played a6 anyways. So move order doesn't always matter. And this came with a threat wanting to take this queen. My opponent played queen c5 and then I played e5 finally because this is what you want to do at worst. Just dominating the center with two of your center pawns. Guys, it's not just about your minor pieces and major pieces. If anything, just think of pushing your pawns and then start defending those pawns or start backing up those pawns. It's like what you do in a serious war where you send the lower ranked soldiers first and then you let the big guys start backing those guys behind. So that's what I'm doing in this case. I let my pawns go first and then I start supporting those pawns with my bigger pieces. By doing so, I'm also coordinating my pieces unknowingly. So that's what you want to do. And that's what White was supposed to be doing by this time. Not like this, playing as if he was the one who was having black pieces. Queen c3 is what my opponent played. And then I played e4. What else? I could have developed my light squad bishop if I wanted to, but I saw an opportunity to advance my pawn because if d takes e4 happened, I was just simply going to take back with my pawn and then start playing based on this pawn. So I was going to play rook e8, bishop a5. Everything I was going to be doing was going to be centered upon this pawn. Queen b6, bring the other rook into the game. This is how we play chess, you guys. So we let the pawns go first to cause chaos and then we start supporting those pawns or that pawn with our bigger pieces. So that's what I was expecting to happen in the game but my opponent played knight e1 for some reason and developing a piece so if I walked into a room and found two people playing this position I was automatically going to say black is winning without even thinking twice about it. Why? Because of how black's pieces are well developed and supporting this pawn which is the most important thing. So after knight e1, I played knight g4. Knight g4 paved way for my dark squad bishop now attacking white's queen. I had intentions of going queen d6 wanting to mate, of course, which was not going to happen easily. My opponent played queen d2 because what else? And then I saw a tactic. So again, what do we learn here? If you play good chess and develop your pieces very quickly on their most active squares, tactics will start showing up automatically. Like in this case, there are many things that I could have done. Develop my light squad bishop, play queen d6, even queen f6. But all of these are zero moves. If you think about it, you want to be attacking. That's why you play chess. So I played e3. I saw this instantly because I have solved a lot of puzzles, which is what you guys are supposed to be doing as well. The skill you get from solving chess puzzles is different 
from the skill you get from studying chess openings and gambits, period. So my idea was if pawn takes, I was just going to take back with my knight. And after queen takes, I was going to play bishop d4, pinning this queen to the king. Very simple stuff once again. Anyways, so that was the first tactic that showed up on the board. This move is what we call a tactical move. And that's how stronger players win most of their games, through tactics. It's not through openings. Guys, hear me please. Queen d1 was played and then that was a successful tactic which allowed me to capture on f2 with check and here after rook takes I was planning to play bishop d4 which was going to be okay by the way uh yeah i think because i'm just maintaining some pressure and at the end of the day i was just going to take this but i decided to take the rook like this and then met my opponent very quickly so i played bishop d4 check and then after bishop e3 i knew i was winning due to this continuation by the way in case king e2 was played i was simply going to take the bishop on e3 why because this was going to be a lot easier for me to mate after king takes rookie eight check and say after king d2 queen f4 was going to be the way to go and then mate white on b4 like this this is one common checkmate that every master out there knows i mean when the king is surrounded by its own pawns like this we always visualize a checkmate like that which creates this mating cage like this maybe supported by the bishop or whatever piece so we always visualize this i saw all these things with my own eyeballs by the way anyway after bishop d4 check and bishop e3 i played queen h4 check and my opponent played g3 after which i simply took on h2 with check and from here it was just a matter of technique before checkmating my opponent it was in this position where my opponent resigned not allowing me to take because this was so painful to watch i was just going to take by the way and again creating this mating cage which was going to allow me to checkmate my opponent very quickly i mean with my pawns maybe like this so this is what happens when a master level player or a skilled coach challenges a 1300 level player again this is in respect of my opponent Right, so I hope you guys learned one or two things. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and also to my second channel where I post some of the most exciting clips from my original videos. And that's why you will find the live footage of this game, by the way. It is on my clips channel called Casper Chess Clips. The reason why I created that channel is to avoid mixing up content. Because what I used to do was posting anything on this main channel which never used to make a lot of sense for example today i post a video about gambits tomorrow i post a short clip another day i post a short then followed by a live stream i mean that was total chaos which is why i considered creating a second channel where i can be posting certain clips from my original videos instead of mixing up these uploads so make sure to check it out as well support casper chess even get my e5 defense course which is on my membership site and my official website www.casperchess.com until next time have a wonderful day